back to back to back. Can we make it three in a row? Let's find out. It is 5.20 in the morning on a Saturday. We are in Poteet, Texas. We are competing in another CBA competition. This one's gonna be a lot of fun. There's a lot of good teams at this event. I am parked right next to Bobby Delgado, Cuatro D Drums. I'm parked also next to Rini Gonzalez, Gonzalez Family Barbecue, Kevin Hernandez, my pits are burning. LC Barbecue's here. Smoking and Toasting is here. Reggie Q's here. DD Barbecue is here. A lot of good teams. So I'm excited about this one. A lot of these guys are in the points chase for the end of the year stuff. And it's exciting being able to compete against them when you know that they're going to be at their absolute best. So I'm very excited about today. We got our point and our flat. Going over top with Southern Bell right now. Don't forget my burnt ends. I try and go a little bit lighter on everything. I don't want to overpower anything. I don't want to get too salty on these. Really focus on getting a nice color and just an overall good cook on the burn ends. Brisk it on. Opposite side of the water pan to start. Point right over the water. Hopefully these things plump up. Now it's time for pork. Just put brisket on. It is 6.03. I always like to make sure I get the under underside here too. And I'm just seasoning the top. Not really worried about the bottom. Obviously I'll roll this over. Get that money right there, but that's it. Then I'm gonna go over top of my money muscles with Bill. Do the same exact thing with Southern Hospitality. We're gonna go same thing on the back side of these ribs. We're gonna go Southern Bell. Prepping outside today because the kids are in the trailer asleep. We'll go back in there when it comes around the boxing time. Hit the back with avocado oil. That way we can flip it over and not lose any seasoning at all. Hi. and season the top side. Gosh dang, forgot how hard it is to season in the wind sometimes, man. You see that just going everywhere? Money's directly over the water pan to start. Eight o'clock and we are injecting our half chickens 
We also have some chicken wings today that we're just going to play around with. We're not going to force them in the box at all whatsoever, but if they taste good, we're definitely going to throw them in. This is just kind of a last minute thing. I saw some wings. I decided to grab them. Again, uh, no pressure to get them in the box. I've learned my lesson the hard way. I'm not going to force anything in there at all, so we'll see what happens. I'm basically going one tube in the breast, one tube between the leg and the thigh, and then I'm basically here on the, the wing itself. I'm just going a pump or two, nothing crazy. We're trying to keep everything super simple this weekend. We injected with LC's foul play on these uh, wings and this chicken, and we actually just used water and phosphates, so nothing, again, nothing crazy at all. And the reason we wanted to do that was because uh, we just wanted to try and make this chicken taste as standard chicken as possible and just see where we stand, see where we fall. But uh, yeah, we'll see if that works out or not gonna season on top of the breast with that base only and then we're just gonna get right into pinning our chicken down one less step that I have to worry about in a little bit so I get these little card holders they're actually called card holders they're from Amazon and I'll probably do like three ish you guys might want to do it a little bit differently but I've found that three maybe four max is usually pretty good there's our two chickens that are pinned what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to grab two more of these and I'm going to do one in a little bit like this right through here after we get our mark and then another one here like that when we get our marks. So for now, we're all good to go and we're just going to start cleaning up. It's exactly 847. Ribs are looking really good. I'm going to go ahead and take them off. Today, we are going to wrap our ribs in a foil pan because I was on the phone with Bill and he showed me this little trick, which I don't even know where he learned it, but he just basically told me to fold that thing up. You can fit a full pan in your drum, so thank you, Uncle Bill. And the reason I like this idea is because then I don't have to worry about the amounts of liquids that I'm putting into each wrap of my ribs because sometimes it's like I guess technically you know I could get a little bit more in one wrap than the other or vice versa whatever so I uh, definitely like this idea more than individually wrapping each rib Hopefully you can see that. 8.51 a.m. Money muscles, time to come off. Looking good. I'll have to trim that one a little bit. That's completely fine. Pork's also looking good. All right, good old Weber kettle chicken with some sears.
Oh, we're going to make the best brisket. Oh, we're going to make the best brisket ever, right, Mom? Yeah. And the best ribs ever, Mom. Right? Best ribs ever. Okay, working on pork. And lately, when it comes to pork, I've been liking to really take my time and process this. So I start right at 1.15 because I have a two o'clock turn in time for my pork. So I usually like to get my knife and really run through the pork here, just to make sure I don't have any fat. And also, this is like a tube right here. You see the, the bark here? I'll pull this apart. And if I notice that it's actually like at the end where the bark is, it's really, really tight and it's tugging, I'll completely cut that bark off. But if it's not and if it's softer, I'm completely fine with leaving it in. I think it adds flavor, but I obviously don't want too much of it and I don't want it to be hard. So although we are trying to please backyard judges, I don't think that that would do too well in a fork and knife competition. So I'm just trying to think about everything that I'm doing here. So... Like this little piece, I'm going to pretty much not really worry about that at all. All that fat, I really, really, really want to get off of this pork. And once I do that, I can start taking my time and pulling. So you can see that the pull is very, very tender here. And again, you know, it pulls apart really good. There's some bark on the backside, but you can see it's not sticking together because of that bark. So I'm completely fine with leaving it there as long as it's soft. So we're just about done. The last part is, although these, so a lot of these actually don't really have the best fat caps when it comes to getting them at your local grocery store, which I got this at Walmart. This is a Prairie Fresh, and it just doesn't really have a, the greatest fat cap, but you will still be able to find some bacon in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the fat from my bacon now. The bacon is literally just a little piece of meat in there right between two fat caps on the bottom of the pork butt. So like right here, I could tell that is hard bark. I don't want that hard bark, but again, I'm trying to be really, really strategic about what I'm doing here. This bacon, as long as it's cooked good, is very, very tender. So what I like to do is I like to try and be strategic with it, right? So I have some nice pieces of bacon here. I obviously don't have enough for the whole box, but what I'll do, and you can see some little fat right there, I wanna get that off. Just be careful, don't pull it too much, but yeah. What I like to do is I like to kind of spread it apart and I make my little bit of bacon go a long way. So I'll kind of put it everywhere on top. So if a judge is gonna get a bite out of this pulled, I wanna make sure to the best of my ability that they're tasting bacon. That's my goal. So this is gonna be my pile right here. This stuff was a little dry. You can see that this has a lot of moisture on it. 
I haven't added anything to it yet, so I really like this pile. Again, nice moisture. It does taste good. We already tasted it a little bit ago, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this right in here. This is where we're gonna start tasting everything. So now I'm taking out my money muscles. It does taste good. So I'm not saucing or anything yet. I'm trying to keep these in a row. I'm gonna get these in my eyes. Go ahead and go outside and we're gonna go ahead and put it on the drum right now it is currently it's 126 so we'll start putting this into our box around 150.
And at the end of the day, we were not able to do the three-peat. That's completely okay with us. We understand that there's no possible way we're gonna win every single barbecue competition. We were a little bit disappointed with that 25th pork because we did feel that the pork was really good today. But I have heard from a lot of teams that poteet is a little bit difficult to cook at. It's just something we're gonna have to get used to. As always, we really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.